Laptops, desktops, and consoles aren't the only uh, computing devices on the market anymore. There are plenty of different other options that play games, run programs, and uh, do general computing stuff. And today we have three different devices that do quite a few different things. So buckle up nerdos, today we're going to make them uh, fight for our pleasure and productivity. <laughs> So let's get the tough thing out of the way, which is money. These three devices come in around the same price category, which is all under a thousand bucks. So anything that wouldn't be a half decent laptop or a gaming desktop. Those three items are the new iPad Air, the Steam Deck, and the Nintendo Switch. But I'm gonna go with the prices for the ones that I have. Pricing for the deck is between four and $650. The iPad Air that I have is around $600. The Nintendo Switch and Switch OLED come in at around $300 and $350. All three of these items fall into the same category, which is essentially a portable computing device. But each one is kind of custom built for doing things differently. Differently. The iPad is just a screen, the Steam Deck is a laptop with a controller glued to it, and the Switch, well, the Switch is an all-purpose device that doesn't have much functionality past gaming. So knowing your own needs, let's go through each one of these devices and uh, figure out what you might need to purchase here as you beautiful bacon bits always seem to want to do. Let's get into it. So the first thing I'm going to start off with is the form factor of each one of these devices. They're kind of apparent, but they each do something a little bit different. So I'm gonna kind of go over them just overall very quickly. The iPad is just a screen. So you're gonna have to immediately buy some sort of accessories to put a case on it, or I have one of those little folios that from Apple, they're perfectly designed, but very expensive for what it is, but it works perfectly for the device, which is why I had unfortunately got one. Gaming on this device, while possible, is not that great. You're gonna have to either hook up a controller or deal with the on-screen touch features, which I personally don't like dealing with. I use this for general purpose functions that a low-end laptop would do. That being web browsing, basic photo editing, and dumping files while you're on vacation. All of these things do turn out very well on the iPad because of the new processor that they have, and it is relatively fast compared to older, junkier laptops that you may have been bringing with you for these needs. Will they take precedent over your computer? No, but maybe your grandma, and all you do is look on Facebook. Then yeah, you won't need to buy a computer if all you're doing is web page browsing and checking up on Facebook and cat videos. For everything else though, you're gonna need a computer. The form factor of this device keeps it kind of limited to the basic web browsing and basic phone functions that we've come to use as a laptop replacement for lower end stuff. So let's move on to the Nintendo Switch because it's been out for a long time now and I believe the Nintendo Switch still has a spot in the marketplace. So the form factor of the Nintendo Switch is a smaller handheld console that has controllers that remove and has been out for a long time so you can get used ones and also controllers and all sorts of third-party options. This one, I would say, is meant for easy, portable gaming, along with kid-friendly and Nintendo-based games at the home at 1080p. That's about it. This brings us to the form factor of the Steam Deck. The Steam Deck itself is kind of an odd device to begin with. It's been incredibly well-received, and I personally love mine. But for everybody, it's not for everybody. It's not that easy to do everything that you wanna do and is a little more involved than say picking up an Xbox at Best Buy and plopping it into the TV and playing. But with that said, the functionality and controllability of the Steam Deck is way larger than the Nintendo Switch or the iPad Air. So the form factor of this one is, this one is, I would say around double the volume of size that you're going to be using for the Switch and also the iPad Air. The iPad easily slips into a bag while the Steam Deck is quite big. Taking this on, the, on a plane or in your backpack is definitely doable. I did it for three weeks while we were traveling overseas. Not a problem, backpack space. It took up just about as much space as a mirrorless camera and two lenses would take up. That being said, 
I still had plenty of room for everything else in my bag, so I wasn't strapped on space. It has decent battery life if you're playing in any sort of game. You can always change the battery types, and I actually have a whole video on the battery if you'd like to watch that down in the comments below. But for the form factor of the Steam Deck, it's a little bit larger than the Nintendo Switch, but it does a lot more things. So we'll leave it there for form factor and get into some use cases next. So we're gonna start backwards this time. So starting with the Steam Deck for use cases. The Steam Deck is generally a Linux-based laptop crammed into a larger Nintendo Switch body. The plastics and everything on this feel great. It does kick out heat like a laptop would, and it is just a completely different gaming experience than all three of the other devices. Now, this being the use case section, it has a lot going on. You can go into the desktop mode, you could stay in the Steam overlay mode for the entire time and wouldn't really know the difference. The Steam desktop mode is great if you're traveling and need to, say, dump some files somewhere and not have to bring a laptop along. It's great, it works perfectly for that. But it's not that practical. You can get it done, not that practical. This device is mainly for gaming. And that's what it does best. It is a gaming console through and through. And if you want to change it to do other things too, it can do that. But I would say the best case scenario for the Steam Deck is gaming at your leisure. This is where the other use case for your iPad comes in. The use case for the iPad is actually way higher in this regard versus the Steam Deck. The iPad Air is great for doing stuff like drafting up emails, watching movies, and dumping files. It was very easy to do those basic tasks on the iPad versus the Steam Deck without a keyboard and mouse. It's the issue of having the touch screen just be super functional versus the Steam Deck, which has a smaller screen, but all of those awesome buttons and controllers for specifically gaming, which is where these two kind of compare and contrast. The Steam Deck was perfect for gaming and just very easy to use and it was great. However, the iPad is a much better basic laptop replacement than the Steam Deck really could be. Now, it won't run any sort of desktop applications, but it runs the App Store, which has a bunch of applications that could fill basic needs. It's not gonna completely replace a desktop or even a high-end laptop, but it'll get you through traveling maybe for a week. And when you're back, you can deal with it then. So the use cases for your iPad is basic laptop replacement. You're not gonna be buying a $500 laptop anymore to be just doing emails on the go, you're gonna be buying an iPad. And it is just easy to do with that kind of stuff. Plus the form factor of not having a keyboard and being able to use the on-screen keyboard or also hook up a Bluetooth keyboard is very easy. That leaves us with the uh, black sheep of the pack, which been around for a while, but I think the Nintendo Switch actually still kinda cuts right through the crosshairs there and fits right into in between these two items of the Steam Deck and iPad Air. Right in between there is the Nintendo Switch. How I would describe the use case for the Nintendo Switch is portable, foolproof gaming on the go. What I mean by that is you're gonna be able to pick this up, click on, play for 20 minutes to an hour, not really kill your battery and turn it back off again. And it's not gonna be a problem. It's very small. It takes up about half the space the Steam Deck would in your bag and it's easily chargeable with USB-C. Both of them are, but the Switch has a lot less battery to fill back up. One of the plus sides or downsides depending on uh, your views on Nintendo is also the Nintendo Store. It doesn't have any other apps, it doesn't have a desktop mode, but it does have the Nintendo Store. If those are the games you are most likely playing every day, then this kind of solves your problem for you. It, it's a cheaper option that has all of the Nintendo games on it. So if you're a younger audience or for a more basic gaming experience that just works right out of the box with no tweaking needed, the Nintendo Switch is going to get that done easier in a smaller package for a much cheaper price. You can get a used Nintendo Switch for not that much money nowadays. So if you're looking for a 30 minute device that you turn on and play on the bus every day, the Nintendo Switch kind of shoehorns itself right into that perfect thing of, it's a tiny handheld that you could play on your commute, which is pretty much why the Game Boy was invented. And it's still 
lives up to that idea of portable, easy gaming. So this kind of leaves us with a bunch of information and uh, what do you really need out of this? For the iPad, I think it's one of those things where if you're going to need a laptop and maybe have a desktop already, but need something on the go for basic computing, I think the iPad's a great way to go. If you're only going to be gaming while you're moving out of the house and doing stuff on the go and don't really care what games you're playing, maybe the Nintendo Store's perfect for you. The Nintendo Switch would fill that gap of a easy, cheap product that you just kind I don't want to bide your time instead of scrolling through Reddit forever. That would work great for that. If you want a little bit of both, but also want to have every sort of thing, detail, and every sort of piece of information you can change on a device, well, the Steam Deck's here for that. It provides a great gaming experience and plenty, plenty, plenty of things to do on it. But this does leave me with a weird kind of use case scenario that I kind of want to mess around with and let me know if you, you would like to see this video too. Taking everything I do in a week on the computer and doing it on the Steam Deck and iPad and seeing if both of those items could completely cover my computing needs for a week of video editing and photo editing and gaming on the go. So let me know if you want to see that in the comment section down below. But right now, I really do have the answer. If you have some of these devices or have older devices of what type of Bluetooth device you need for each one of those headphones, keyboards, fancy stuff like that. And it's going to be in one of these videos. So go check them out. And I have a hairy beard, not a hairy beard. I'm very itchy and I don't like this. I'm trying to grow it out for a Halloween costume. I'll let you know if it turns out okay.